Hello, welcome to the Online Graduate Research Forum for Fall 2018. My name is Perry Jeffries. I'm a graduate student in the Masters of Arts in Interdisciplinary Studies program in the Department of Occupational, Workforce, and Leadership Studies. The title of my research study is Leveraging the Military Veteran Peer Network to Use the Columbia Suicide Severity Rating Scale for Short-Term Suicide Prevention. What's the problem? Society, and I assume most of us, consider suicide a problem. It is one of the only leading causes of death in America not being reduced year over year. It is even more of a problem for our veterans, a group of people who not only sacrificed for the nation, but often have more resources at their call than others. For years, the veteran suicide rate trailed the rest of the nation, but that has changed in the last two decades or so, and recently in the group of veterans that are aged 18 to 34 years old. This change is alarming, and it's out of scale with their percentage of the population. In veterans overall, the rate is 1.5 times higher than for non-veterans. We hear a lot about the problem, and even some numbers thrown around. But pro tip, 22 a day is neither accurate or all that useful or used by the VA anymore. We've got awareness. What's next? There is more research funded by DOD and VA about suicide going on right now than in all the rest of human history. What's not being looked at so much is what can we do? What's useful for people without specific training or health care responsibilities who can help with this problem? The purpose of this study was to determine if providing a peer volunteer force, peers meaning other veterans, with an evidence-based tool to identify suicidality and including some specific directions about what to do then would be useful in identifying and preventing suicide and how would that affect their volunteering. You can see a copy of the color-coded CSSRS instrument at left. Four research questions guided the study. Would this group of peers be able to understand the tool we provided them? The Columbia Suicide Severity Rating Scale. It's a well-documented questionnaire to identify a person at risk. Would they use it when indicated? Would they do what it said? And would this knowledge or practice make it more likely they'd stay engaged as volunteers? To get a look at the issue and to identify areas for later research, I chose phenomenology, the study of the volunteers' own percep perceptions and descriptions of what they experienced or perceived. I studied this by conducting semi-structured interviews recorded around the state with the Military Veteran Peer Network, or MVPN. And this is a statewide network with hundreds of active volunteers of more than a thousand trained in peer support. They are anchored around a few full-time organizers that connect with veterans, that connect veterans with resources at the local level, recruit and organize the volunteers. Most are military veterans or family members, and this group serves as an example to other states without there being a lot of documentation about them. Working with the MVP and leadership, we provided training on CSSRS and spent about a year familiarizing the volunteers and their coordinators with it. Then, after reaching out through the network, I visited several locations and interviewed a variety of people involved with the MVPN. I tried to interview as diverse a group as possible, and I was generally successful. I spoke with men and women from 25 to 79 years of age in locations from San Antonio to Denton, including people that deployed to Vietnam, Iraq, Afghanistan, or had children or spouses who deployed. Some of the people I spoke to had attempted suicide, and at least one was a professional who used the tool both in professional and volunteer work. After transcribing the interviews, I used InVivo software to help me with the thematic coding and identifying trends or issues. I looked at these themes in general and compared them against the demographics I'd collected. For the most part, there was no revelatory information in this comparison, except in one area. What did we find? Some things I learned are more training is needed to get volunteers to comply. For a variety of reasons, people often hesitated to immediately alert emergency services 
when the CSSRS said to. The reasons were different. Some felt that a trip to the emergency room would induce economic hardship. Some felt that they should ask more questions or dig deeper first, minimizing risk. The CSSRS is clear on what to do, but not all the peers were resolute. And this is in line with some other research about the way people minimize perceived risk. Younger people had trouble sticking to the order of questions. This was the only category or issue that seemed to align with any demographic. To some degree, younger people had problems keeping the person on track with the questions. Often the person they wanted to ask the CSSRS questions of would just blurt out something that pushed them into the red indicators. At least one person said they would want to memorize the questions, and I thought that was a good idea. Having the tool was a good way of engaging volunteers. This was one of my hypotheses, and to a person, they agreed that having the tool and even occasional training like this made them feel more connected to the network and more likely to stay engaged. They almost all asked for the clipboards and cards I had with me that had the CSSRS printed on them. And these requests continued even last week. So for the future, I'd assume that extensive training videos and ease of use of the CSSRS, combined with the color-coded scale, would make it straightforward that people would follow the instructions. I learned this was not always the case, and for some unexpected reasons. The study was limited in how many people from MVP and I spoke with, and it would be good to see a larger study completed to see if different kinds of training work better. Does an in-person training need to happen? Should the videos that Columbia produces now be changed? And how does the training hold up over time, or in different populations, or in populations with different levels of engagement? The hypotheses regarding engagement did prove out. Whether the volunteer had long experience with CSSRS and MVPN or was just being introduced, they felt it was accurate, useful, and a tool they could use to help people and not always just veterans. We know that asking about suicide can prevent suicide. We know that training to prevent suicide is preventive for the people trained. We know that having a thing to do helps volunteers stay engaged. Now we need to find the best ways of training and equipping them to ask about suicide and give them resources to turn to when they identify it. So I want to disseminate this information both about the Military Veteran Peer Network and in destigmatizing asking about suicide as widely as possible. I will start by submitting an article to the Journal of Affective Disorders. I appreciate Mr. Ted Hughes from the Texas Veterans Mental Health Program and Dr. Kelly Posner from Columbia University for giving me access to the volunteers and permission to use the CSSRS in publication. Anyone can visit the Columbia Lighthouse website, download a copy of the CSSRS, and start saving lives today. So please, hit the like button on the page below, or the dislike, to indicate your anonymous preference for this study by clicking on one of the two icons. And post your comments or questions in the YouTube comment section below. I will respond to inquiries posted from November 16th through at least the 30th on this page. Thank you.